it's one of the most common questions asked on the internet when it comes to RVing. Can I run my propane fridge while driving? It's an important question, and in this video, we are going to discuss this not so cut and dry answer. But first, before we dive into all that, we'd like to thank Bowshield T9 for sponsoring this video, which helps us pay the bills and keeps this content free for you to watch. Protect your RV from rust and corrosion with Bowshield T9's waterproof spray on formula. Bowshield T9 provides long lasting lubrication that can be used on all kinds of metals and won't harm the paint, plastic, rubber, fiberglass, or vinyl. Bowshield T9 can be used on, deep breath, awning hardware, steps, linkage, trailer hitches, tow bars, control cables, window tracks, shower doors, electrical connectors, wiring, terminals, generators, undercarriages, slide outs, jack stands, locks, latches, hinges. One day I'll have that list memorized. Just spray T9 on and wipe off any excess for immediate use. One simple step gives you a thin, penetrating film of durable waterproof protection that endures mile after mile. We'll put a link in the description so you can check out Bowshield T9 for yourself or visit bowshield.com to learn more. Welcome back to RV Miles, I'm Abby. And I'm Jason, and today we're going to discuss one of our most searched topics on RVMiles.com. Is it safe to run your propane fridge while you're driving? Now, the manufacturers are very careful not to say whether it's permissible or not, which leaves a lot of RV owners confused as to the proper protocol to keep their refrigerator cool and hundreds of dollars worth of food safe on a travel day. The fact of the matter is there's no simple answer, and most RV owners do run their propane while they're driving even if they don't admit it. However, leaving your propane on does expose you to some risks, and it's important that you understand those risks. A severed propane line in an accident can ignite in an instant, much easier than spilled gasoline or diesel can. And your propane lines are often much more vulnerable than you think they are. They're usually wide open to the road below. We like to think of safety as binary, positives and negatives, but there are lots of levels of risk. No one can tell you how risky it is to have your propane on when you drive because there just aren't stats on those sorts of things. In our research, we found few incidents of RV fires that could be attributed to leaving the propane on. If you have a three-way fridge, which is a fridge that uses AC shore power, power used when you're plugged into a campsite, DC battery power, power used off your batteries, and propane, it's a no-brainer. Shut your propane off entirely and run your fridge on 12 volt DC power while driving. That's what it's there for. A lot of newer RVs have residential or 12 volt only fridges and don't have to worry about this. We have a 12 volt Everchill fridge and have yet to have an issue with running the fridge on 12 volt DC power while we're traveling. In fact, after an eight hour day through the scorching heat of Arizona and Nevada, our beers, or hard seltzer, we're still just as cold as when we closed up and hit the road earlier that day. Listen, those white claws are good, okay? There's no law with the claw, Mr. Epperson. <laughs> if you own a motorhome, your onboard generator is another option for running off of AC power. This is a very safe method and comes with the added bonus of running an air conditioner in your motorhome. Now, a word about motorhomes. If you're thinking about running your two-way fridge off of your inverter, that may not always be possible. Some RV electrical systems disable this option while driving to save your alternator from being overloaded. But if you know your system and have a decent battery capacity, it's possible. You might be surprised to know that many RVers just shut their fridge off without any issue. In fact, that's exactly what we did when we had our propane fridge in our travel trailer. You only lose about four degrees every eight hours your fridge is off if you keep it closed. It just wasn't necessary for us to leave the propane on, so we shut it off for the peace of mind. The key to success of a turned off fridge is that you have to keep it closed. If you open it just once or twice, that will raise the temperature of your fridge, but it's all about how quickly you open it and then close it. We were usually able to travel about six hours with our propane fridge off, only opening it once or twice for lunch and water and everything was still frozen and at food safe temperatures when we arrived at the campground. Another travel day tip is to decrease the temperature the night before you travel, which will help keep things extra cool while the fridge is off, or just grab a cooler and pack your lunch in the cooler. We often do that even now just to keep from having to put the slide out in order to have lunch. Keep the cooler right there by the door or in the back of the truck and everything is right there. Quick lunch at a rest area back on the road. Another consideration is that gas absorption refrigerators are meant to operate within a few degrees of level. 
poor cooling and sometimes damage can occur if it's run out of level for extended periods of time. If your toe setup isn't level for some reason, a long day running the fridge can certainly damage it. Whatever method you choose, it is your choice to make. Just please remember to shut your propane off entirely at gas stations and in some states when going through tunnels. It's the law. Having an open flame burning in your fridge compartment near a gas pump isn't a very good idea. And we have found documented incidents of fires related to this problem in particular. All the more reason to just shut it off for the entire drive and not worry about it. So there you have it, a multiple choice answer to one of the most asked RV questions. Do you agree or disagree with our take? Have anything to add? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and let YouTube know that they should show it to more people. We'd also like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and join us each week for the latest in RV and outdoor news, the RV Miles podcast, and more RV life focused videos. And speaking of RV life, check out this video on motorhomes versus towables or this one YouTube generated for you. We'll see you on the next one.